Welcome to St Saviour's and to this online service for the sixth Sunday after Trinity. There's also our low mass scheduled for YouTube at 11.30 this morning, but it's quite a momentous day because as well as our online services, the doors of the church building are open this morning as this service goes out to welcome a congregation of around 30 people socially distanced and with appropriate face coverings in order for the parish mass to be said for the first time. Quite deliberately, we're taking things slowly and carefully, feeling our way gently, making sure that people are comfortable and happy with the arrangements. But the chances are that in the weeks to come, there'll be the opportunity for a parish mass at 10 o'clock, but also at 11 o'clock for extra numbers uh, if they're required. But for those who can't be with us physically or who don't yet feel ready to take that step, our online services will continue uh, each week, as will Night Prayer live on Facebook each evening at 10 p.m. So in this service, Father Andrew helps us to reflect on the gospel reading, the parable of the wheat and tares. Not a bad text as lockdown is eased and we come to think about the good things and the not so good things that have grown up around us in that time. But talking of good things, it's a good opportunity to say thank you to our online choir, to Nicholas and Susan Hare and Chris Muley for all the effort and time that's gone into preparing, performing and editing the music for our online services in these past months. We're not pensioning them off yet, uh, but just as they would usually have a break over the summer, after this Sunday and next, uh, the virtual choir will be having a rest. So as we come to worship together this morning, we take a moment to still our hearts and remember God's presence with us now, wherever we may be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all those who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us, for the creation awaits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the household came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evil doers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. During lockdown, Anne and I have been spending much more time in the garden, and this year the blossoms and the fruit have been quite exceptional. 
But amidst all this beauty, there's always been the weeds. Where did they come from? Who has not at some point asked that question and wondered why? The pandemic has attracted relentless media coverage, leaving many people to ask, how did our world get into this state? And we've had a refugee crisis for some time, long before the virus attacked, and the refugees still keep coming to find a better life for their families. It seems that the world is in turmoil. Inevitably, we look at our own lives against this background and take stock. For some, life's journey has been made more difficult by the pandemic. Maybe the pandemic has prompted you to ask yourself, how did my life get into this state? There are many things that wound us on our pilgrim journey. Betrayals, resentments, addictions, fears, loneliness, perhaps facing the death of someone you love, a debilitating illness. These bring people back to the old question. Why, if God is good and loving, did this happen? Where did these weeds come from? If we're not careful, we are lulled into the presumption that if we do good and be nice to everyone, things should develop as we want. You can see the same theme playing out with the slaves in today's parable. Master, they ask the farmer, did you not sow good seed in your field? Of course, they know he did. But they are surprised by the weeds. They are unsettled and feeling insecure. This was not the plan. Where did the weeds come from? And they want to know now. And so do we. When things go wrong, we demand an explanation and someone to blame. We shy away from acknowledging the real world, where our weeds and the weeds of the world coexist with our plantings. Behind our desire for an explanation and the name of the culprit is a truth many of us do not want to accept. The reality, according to Jesus, is that our lives and our world are a field in which good and evil, life and death, happiness and sorrows grow and live side by side. The wheat and the weeds grow together in the world and in the lives of all of us. It's good news that such is the kingdom of heaven, for it reassures that despite the weeds around us, the kingdom is still here for us. The weeds have not overcome God's kingdom. But how should we deal with the weeds? The slaves wanted to root them out, but Jesus says, let them grow together until the harvest. At first sight, that seems nonsense. Are the weeds not harmful for the crop that was planted? Do you want us to pull up the weeds, the slave asks their master? No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. It seems the separation between the wheat and the weeds is not as clear as it first appeared to be. It is not as clear cut as the media, our politicians and our personal opinions would often have us believe. And are we the ones to uproot those we see as weeds? Jesus gives a clear answer. Let them grow together until the harvest. Jesus leads us towards allowing growth and coexistence as we watch and wait to see how the situation plays out. Jesus leads his followers to wait and to be patient amongst the weeds of their lives. We are asked to confront each situation with tolerance and forgiveness, falling back on Jesus' commandments. Love your enemy. Love your neighbour, love yourself, 
love God. Maybe that's how the wheat begins to disentangle its roots from the weeds and show itself to be wheat and not weeds. Love and forgiveness are what life is all about in the mixed field of God's kingdom on earth. Amen. God and Father, we pray for the world. We pray for all those people who are struggling at this time with the worry of a second outbreak of COVID-19 or finding ways of living their lives safely. May they know that you are there beside them with every step they take. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, let us pray for our country, for Elizabeth our Queen and for our leaders both nationally and locally. May they find the strength to lead us through our troubles and help us to find peace and love. We pray for Father Richard, Father Tony and Father Andrew as they lead us in our worship and we pray you will guide them as we start to take our first steps to opening the church so we can worship together. Today, we pray, pray for those living in Edmund Beaufort Court. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for those who are sick and in need. We remember those who look after them, administer to their needs and make their lives more bearable each and every day. We pray for Bill Hamilton, Mary Harding, Mike Jones, Jane Kellett, Hilary Miller, Ava Randall, Laverne, Peter Chisholm, Julia, David Tuckett, Nonita Palmer, and David Lapthorne. May they all find the strength to carry on with the knowledge you are always by their side. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for those who have recently died. We pray for Valerie Oman, Father Roy Day, Vanessa Lee and Jane Humphreys. We remember their loved ones in their hour of need and pray that they may find your love and comfort at this time. We remember those whose anniversary is today. Baden Goodchild, priest. Francis Morton. Caleb Napper. Fanny Nichols and Charles Robinson. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Alban and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>